Greeted by hugs and kisses, <laughs> Sue and Phil Ursula returned from one of the most difficult challenges of their lives. That was reaching the top of Mount Everest. Another accomplishment they share alone, they are the first husband and wife team to conquer the highest mountains on each of the world's seven continents. I'm a firm believer that vision drives activity. That we can do one thing and it's just commit to that vision, then the right activity follows. You can reach your impossible dreams, that's personally or professionally. We did find there's a few rules that are very helpful along the way. Susan Urschler sets seemingly impossible goals and achieves them. During her 23-year corporate career, she's held leadership positions in several Fortune 500 corporations, earning 11 annual President's Club Sales Awards along the way. She's led teams with increasing revenue responsibility from $3 million to $600 million, ending up as regional vice president. And during that era of corporate achievement, she and her husband Phil climbed Mount Everest and the Seven Summits. Phil and Susan Urschler, and they became the first married couple to climb the highest peaks on each of the seven continents together. We had just um, gone across the Hillary Step, which was very frightening to me. So your thought also is, how are you going to get back down? Last year we had a setback and didn't uh, end up making it to the top almost. And then this year we were able to complete the goal. Congratulations, it's quite an achievement. It's made history. So how does a non-climber prepare oneself mentally and physically to climb Mount Everest. I fell back on the only process I knew, and it's the process that we all learn in these jobs in going after top performance and very large corporate objectives. So how do you do the impossible when you can't afford to fail? Three essentials. Susan tells her electrifying story to audiences with clarity and passion, and audiences respond with standing ovations. Over 60 eight-foot ladders can be used to fix that entire ice fall. Sometimes four ladders are used. Four ladders can be lashed together to get us over those really wide ones. Now that sounds quite sensible, but when you're walking across them, there's this real unnerving bounce, and then they start swaying. And then if you look down in there, they appear to be bottomless. We had to take our mind off the distraction and focus on getting to that next camp, focus on getting to the summit, not what can go wrong. Up here, you don't want to be focused on where you don't want to go. You don't want to be focused on falling or what can go wrong. Two times we didn't make the top of Everest, two failed attempts. But each time we just regrouped, refocused, reset the goal. And also, as we learn here, no doesn't necessarily mean no. If you're going after the right thing, in fact, no means not yet. Not yet. We need to go back, go back, go back. Just do something different. Change what we're doing. And that is just as true in our businesses. A team outperforms an individual every single time on every single task. Team outperforms an individual. Susan's ability to relate the challenges, risks, and rewards of climbing to the business world were invaluable. Susan is truly an inspiration for all of us. Excellent speaker, inspiring, motivational, and relevant. This remarkable journey earned Susan and Phil worldwide media attention, including Good Morning America, CNN, The New York Times, and countless others. My life became two quantifiable goals, 29,035 feet and $300 million in a sales objective. So 29,035 feet, and I'm so pleased we have all these technical operations folks in the audience and DSCs, and and because uh, it's a highly technical process. I wrote 29,035 feet on two yellow sticky notes, and I stuck one on my computer at home, one on my computer at work. That number's high, and it's high for any mountaineer, really high for me. But what I found was that by looking at it several times a day over the course of months, it became doable in my mind. I can go there. 
Now, we stole this right out of our business practices. First thing that we would do is we took that number and wrote it down. And the way that I did this is I had a, I had a business journal. We will blow away 300 million. Why is that so important? We are so information overloaded, right? I don't know about you, but I could have gone to work all day and done nothing but email. There's so much of it. But I didn't think that that was going to lead us to the 300 million. So by having it in writing, every morning I'd look at that. That's what we do. All activities associated with that, going after the 300 million, and try to eliminate, spend less time, get rid of.